Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den, Legacy Internet Radio. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who has been rocking with us tonight as we go through this outstanding show. We are on live, LegacyInternetRadio.com. We are live from Brewers Cafe right here on Bainbridge in the capital city. Yeah. All right. All right. So, you know, one of the staples of Legacy in that radio is we talk a little bit of some political stuff. And the reality is the current dude that is inhabiting the White House is the gift that keeps on giving. Now, one thing that I will say, if you know me, you know I'm not okay with personal attacks of anybody for any reason. No matter how much you love them or like them, I don't do the personal attacks. Am I a fan of this dude? Absolutely not. But I'm not going to come on the radio, call him out his name, and and, and call him the things that folks want to call. I'm not going to do that. I'm just not. That that to me is petty. It's small. It's, it, we can deal with the things that he's doing as opposed to dealing with him on a personal level. Having said all of that, the former uh, 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 national security person, Michael Flynn, was someone who was fired. He was fired in February of 2017. He was fired because apparently he was hanging out with the Russians. President of the United States at the time, we know now, knew that Michael Flynn was hanging out with the Russians. We also know that the President of the United States asked the FBI lead or head, James Comey, to not, listen to me, not investigate Michael Flynn. He didn't want him to investigate Michael Flynn because he already himself knew that Michael Flynn was messing with the Russians. That to me sounds like some sort of, uh, I don't know. That, that sounds like he, he, he knew what was going on. So somebody in the room, grab a mic, talk to me a little bit about how the president has some obstruction of justice things going on. Anybody, where's the microphones? You got a mic? You got a mic? Give a mic. Toyana, you got a mic? Flip, 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 flip switch. Flip it up. Give it to me. Okay. Try it now. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I got you. So, um... The president that we have, I would say, he's the one that plays in the sandbox with his friends. And the moment that someone throws sand in someone's eyes, he's very quick to point the finger, even though maybe he did it, to say that he didn't do it. And that gives him the opportune time to remove himself. So... The sad thing about it is, is that um, this president makes us feel or tries to make us feel that we're dumb and we don't know what's going on. Um, I think he believes the lies that he shares. And if anybody does not agree with that lie at that time, that, okay, well, I'm not going to play with you anymore. And if I'm not going to play with you anymore, nobody else will. The scary thing about it is, and I know y'all don't want to hear this, and Marcus, go ahead and correct me because, you know, you and I, we do go back and forth. Yeah, we fight. We battle. Had not my girl, and yes, I say my girl, but did not Hillary Clinton share this wise, wise warning during the presidency about his involvement with Russia? Did she not point out some of the things that this president, who is now our president, that she was trying to warn us that we might not want him to have this much power. 
Now, if I'm wrong, someone please correct that. But we still chose him. Now, that means we still chose him because, one, you either voted for him or you didn't vote. And if you didn't vote, well, you voted for him. Because had we had more votes to do what they had to do, whether it was for Hillary or for someone else, we would not have him in. So I see one of my sisters shaking her head, but I, I, I just think that, again, this person is dangerous enough that he knows what he's doing, and again, he's pushing people out the sandbox. As long as you play with him, and he's not in the middle, he's going to make sure he's going to protect himself and his family. Remember that. His family is in the house running stuff as well. That's just my point. That's how I feel. Marcus, can I jump in real quick? Please, please. You jump just in. Said, when she said you either voted for him or you didn't vote, um, that's not really fair to say you either voted for him or you voted for other candidates that were on the ballot or you didn't vote. You know, a lot of people didn't vote, but that wasn't the only option. The option was to vote for whoever was on the ballot. So if you voted for him or you didn't vote for him and you voted for somebody else that was on the ballot or you didn't vote, that's it. That's it. But we can't let. Give a mic. Go, grab, get, 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 get a mic. Get, hold, hold on. So, so, so let me give you a mic. If more votes came in we would have a little bit more of a different type of a presidency. My statement, my comment is true. You voted, you stood in line, you did your due diligence and your rights, and you did that. Whether you did Republican, whether you did Democrat, or whether you did liberal. But when you chose, and I'm not pointing fingers, but if you chose to stay in your bed, or you chose to not vote, you have no right. You have no right to say what this president is doing, right or wrong, because we are now stuck with him. That is my stand. Now, when it gets to the next four, what is it? Is he going to make it, Marcus? Okay. I mean, he, oh, well, we all agree with that. He's not going to make it. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I mean, is he going to make it to, to you know? So... Right. Yeah, so hopefully, right. so hopefully, whether he <laughs> makes it, it. my sister to no. the two-year line, he won't make it to the six years like we did. But if he does not make that, I hope whoever is listening that your voice is not the voice that you're speaking out of telling everybody what you're going to do and you don't, is when you go there in line and you sign or fill out that little dot or push that button. So we all have to be held accountable, whether you like it or not. So again, my stand is, if you voted or you didn't vote for him, he made it in this office. Now, somebody in here tell me why. We, are, we already know that. <laughs> you get anybody started. Can you get anybody started here started? It's gonna be you. are gonna be here all night long. We not. We not already started. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know why. Okay, because it was. It, what we were talking about a retrograde back yeah. because Obama was with. It went in. This ain't nothing but the hanging of the last eight years, and they saying these niggas is not taking over this country, and that's fine. For real though, seriously. But, Seriously. <laughs> oh, right, exactly. <laughs> Seriously, exactly. Exactly. That's what that was. We all know. God, because man. most of the, for real, for what I, I know, I don't want to call nobody out, but it's a whole bunch of white people I know who did vote for him who now regret it. Yeah. And so I'm saying, okay, why you vote for him for real? Oh, 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 oh. I know why you voted for him for real because I was looking like a threat to you. You know what I mean? I agree with that. Okay, but yeah, I agree. my question is <laughs> I am really not very articulate to handle questions of this magnitude. So I'm just going to ask y'all a question. Let's say that he were to get impeached. Let's just pretend, okay? With all that's going on. Can we just wrestle with, that memory for a second? Like, let's, oh. you know, what, you know <laughs> they say faith, 
Faith it works, you know. So let's just have the faith that it that it's gonna happen. But let's pretend that he really is impeached, and let's also keep in mind with all that's going on with the FBI, this and all of this, that that. What will the United States look like when that happens? And everybody in here is kind of young. I don't. I, I yes, everybody in here is kind of young. So I don't know if anybody was here during Nixon, mm -hmm. you know, because I think this is kind of a. It's a Nixon replay a little bit of what happened then, Kinda. um, at least from what I learned, you know, but, um, I'm just wondering what would a country look like at that moment? Will it be any better? Will we be hopeful? Will we be happy? Like, what are we just, I mean, any standpoint, give me anything. I'm just, just you know, and, and, and to be honest with you, Ashley, I really don't know because again, we already know if Trump. If he gets impeached or if he steps down, do we know who's next in line? And Pence. And I really don't think that he's any better for us. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then and then who who is after that? Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. And again, the Speaker of the House. The fact that they're looking at the fact that there are so many people that have been, um, I can't think of the word right now, basically looked at in this collusion that it could potentially wipe out that entire. So it would be Pence, Ryan. Mitch McConnell, yep. all these people will be taken out. So it would be us try basically starting over. Because it wouldn't be like, oh, well, the Republicans are out now. Let's move to the Democrats. Like, it, it would because there haven't been many, outside of Nixon, impeachments. Right. He, so he, here's my, we got he, close with Clinton, he, but... Here's my question, right? right? Here's, here's, here's my question, right? We have watched how all of this has gone down. And we know who has been elected. We... It, we can't complain about none of that. We like it's 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 some real shit. Like like get out your feelings. Donald Trump's president. Oh, he's not my president. Quit being a punk. He's fucking president. Ooh, I cussed. All right, whatever. That's he's why he ain't my president. He's president. <laughs> like you 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 be you being petty and you being whack with the whole he's not my president stuff. He's a president. He just is. <laughs> he he just he just is. So ha having said having said all of that, and my bad for those folks. Who not used to hear me cuss? Get over yourself. I fucking cuss. So, yeah, twice on purpose. The second one was on purpose. First one was by accident. So, having said all of that, having said all of that, the reality is he's the president of the United States, right? We got all of this sexual harassment stuff that's going on. We got <coughs> Donald Trump who's the 45th president of the United States, who just endorsed the guy in, what is it, Alabama, who got banned, Roy Moore, thank you, first lady, who got banned from the mall. You can't come here. You trying to holler at little girls. You can't come to the mall. We don't want you here. You not welcome here. He is the dude that's running for the Senate in Alabama. He's running against a guy who has prosecuted the dude who blew up the damn church in, 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 in Alabama that killed babies, killed black babies. That's who you're running against. Look it up. If you don't know, we ain't got time to get into all of that. That's not what I'm doing right now. I'm just giving you little pieces. Go Google it. Well, Marcus. Roy Moore is running against a dude who prosecuted the people who blew up churches that killed people. And you got Republicans. You got Republicans who are saying, you know what? I'm still going to vote for Roy Moore because we would rather have a Republican in office than a Democrat. Not only do you have the people saying that, but you have the governor of Alabama saying that. And guess what? The governor of Alabama is a woman. It's a woman. I'm not supposed to say female. Females, y'all get mad at me for saying female, so I'm not going to say female. But you got a woman governor of Alabama saying that. Yeah. You got a female governor. Woman. Girl, lady, woman, all of the, like, stuff. So how do we, as, 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 as people in America, reconcile? How do we deal with that? How are we supposed to deal with the fact that the president of the United States is an endorsing a dude who says, yeah, I'm all right with this dude being a senator 
That's the dude who's been banned from malls because we think that he's the creepy guy. And you got people in that state saying, yeah, we want the creepy guy to be in the, in the Senate as opposed to a Democrat. This is the America we live in. America. Notice I didn't say America. It's America. Help me out. Anybody. Well, Sister, I- Sister, help me. <laughs> You are you are no square where I'm going. I'm, I'm I am a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> and you do know that the new world order is always going to be about a distractive mood and a distractive agenda. The sad thing about it is, and somebody please correct me, we've missed the agenda. They shared that with us five years ago. They shared that with us when Obama was in the office. There were some important, intricate parts of our government that they were talking about, and we missed it. And now we are being bamboozled and hoodwinked with everybody now is a sex offender. I was shocked. No, I'm not shocked. But when Russell Simmons, and I'm I'm not going to take your thunder from that, but I'll just hold it right there. The name Russell Simmons, we all know that name. But when he gets down there, he is also the missing link to the atrocity that's going on with the sexual improvised. And, and if you get a little bit deeper in it, it ain't about women. Remember, it was 13 white women who came out and discussed their intimate and most embarrassing moments with Winstein, Winstein or Weinstein. Only 13. Remember that. After those 13 white young ladies, actresses, you know, women that we see on the television screens and movies, everybody come out. Tony Cruz even came out and said that he was being assaulted. So is yeah, this a Cruz. woman thing? Is this a heterosexual or homosexual thing? But there is an agenda, and we are being so confused right now that that's the hot topic. But See, sit back and think, what was the hot topic three months ago? So my brother See, got his hand up. This what, this What's the hot topic that they want us not to know? What, hold on. Hold on. Go ahead, B. This, yeah, I'm about can well, you, I need I need to uh, go next. Go ahead, B. I need to go I'm next. Gonna, uh, I'm going to quote my brother, Mr. Hotspot. And I think if we would all quote him, we would all be better off. And <clears throat> excuse me. It's none of my business. It's none of my business. I think what's happening is the media is telling us what to care about, and it ain't none of our business. Um, what happens is sometimes a, a mishandling of the hands, if you will, happens or does not happen because there is a such thing as false accusations. I'll leave that alone. Um, mm. It does or does not happen. And as a result of that, you know, something should take place. And if it doesn't take place, it should take place later. What I'm saying is that's between the two people that it happened between. Somebody reports it, and then a thousand other people get involved emotionally, and now you have a cause for something that you, number one, don't know all the facts to and never could, and then B, ain't none of your business. So then what we have is some things that have been going on since the beginning of time get lumped together as a thing. From since the beginning of time that you have, you've had men who have been abuse, abusers of power, check your Bible. Since the beginning of time, you've had women who have been getting abused, check your Bible. So now all of a sudden, now that we know about these varied cases in all these other places, we get to lump them together and it's a thing. When the truth is, it ain't a thing. The thing is going on in your house with your son who's selling dope living on your couch and your daughter, you don't know where she at. So we get time to look at stuff that don't have nothing to do with us and ignore the things that we can affect because our timelines tell us that we should. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. Yeah. Can I, can I touch on that? Touch on that, Cuba. Um, a lot of that is bullshit, and I'm going to say why. <laughs> Straight up. Um, rape culture is rape culture is rape culture. No, it's not a distraction. This has been happening to women and to men for the dawn of time and people in power have taken it upon themselves to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take this from you because I deem I can. Everybody got mad at Bill Cosby. Oh, Cliff Huxable. No, that's my daddy. He not. It's been proven that he ain't. And everybody said, oh, well, he was trying to buy NBC. That was a lie too. So it's like, 
So many people are hiding behind the person that has power when that person has proven over and over again, this ain't got nothing to do with somebody being on a pedestal. This has nothing to do with somebody um, being, you know, that was like my father figure that has nothing to do with that. If somebody falls from grace, if somebody does something that they're not supposed to do in the, under the guise of power, then that's their, that's their thing. And the people that come out, Terry Crews came out and said the reason why he came out because he knew that once he said something, he was going to be looked at as a dangerous black dude no matter what he did. No matter what he did. Lupita Nyong'o was the only one that got called out when she said what she said about Harvey Weinstein. All these other women was like, oh my gosh, we cannot believe this. And then Lupita, that's the first time he said, no, I didn't. All these other women were white. So we have it in our community where people are going around touching things, touching people, touching things, just demon because I can. Because I do this and I do that. Ain't nobody going to believe you. Exactly. It's about that money. That's, that's the exact same thing that Bill Cosby said. That's the same thing that Harvey Weinstein said. That's the same thing that so many other men have said. Who gonna believe you? I've done this. I've, I, I have this. Like Harvey said the things that he said. Louis C.K. said the things that he said. It was like, yo, we... That's what we have to realize and we have to stop giving people an, an out. Like, that's why I said it's bullshit. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy in that radio. Caller, what's your name? What you want to get in on? Hello, yes. This is Mr. LP, Stephen Sykes. How's everybody doing today? What's up, brother? What's going on? Hey, I'm doing all right. I wanted to first say congratulations on the sixth year anniversary of Ain't No Half Step in with Marcus J. I'm proud of everybody. We appreciate you. And brother. also, I. It, no problem. And also, I want to just want to say I'm sorry I couldn't get in. I'm uh, I'm under uh, everybody's orders. I got my leg up and rest of my uh, foot and leg. But uh, I just wanted to you know give a shout out and continue to all the good work and blessings to all of you. Thank you, brother man. You 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 listening? To anything on uh, the live line that you want to get in on as far as the topics? Uh, you know, y'all been doing a, a special job and things. I'm not going to dilute it with my words and things like that. But as far as the Star Wars things, I'm very much looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I'm just curious to see where it's going to go. I know they're looking to do another set of series and things like that. So I'm just curious of new blood, new life, new ideas, and just trying to see where it goes. And uh, even though it's a fiction and a variety of other different things, hopefully at some point in time, Art could imitate life by imitate art, and we can learn to try to get along, regardless of background, colors, and species. And you know, you're my brother, regardless of color, race, creed, or if you're alien, I could care less. At the end of the day, we all live on this earth, and we got to learn to work at each, uh, work with it, each other. Well, we appreciate you, man. You you are part of the fabric of Legacy in that radio, whether you're in the room with us, or you are calling on the phone, or you just giving us wisdom. You coming in. You doing things behind the scenes. And most of the folks who listen to us every single day, they have no idea who you are. But I know who you are, and we know that <laughs> I know that Legacy in That Radio would not be where it is without you, Mr. LP Stephen Sykes. So we love you, man. We appreciate Thank you, you. Appreciate checking it. check checking in. Whether you're in the building or not, you still here, man. And everybody in this room, we rocking with you. We we rock with Mr. LP, right, yo? Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah. All right. So, pay me when I see you. I right, holla at you later. <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. I'm gonna pay you in Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin. <laughs> yes. yes. Pay you in Bitcoin. That's what there I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love you, man. Holla Love at you soon. Uh, Peace. Y'all have wanna, a blessed one. You I want to say. I want to say one more thing before. Um, anything else if somebody has not given you the right to touch them you don't have the right to touch them consent is consent is consent that person does not remember or that person did not give you illicit let yes you can do this thing that it is considered rape and that is what a lot of these people are dealing with right now and it's about power rape has nothing to do with sexuality rape has nothing to do with pleasure rape has everything to do with power and control so a lot of the time majority of the time women are not believed because they have a past or the person they're accusing or they want something from them and they're like no no it's bullshit so that that's how i feel about it. i'm always gonna root for the victim i'm always gonna ride for the victim 
I agree with everything that you're saying. I just want to put that out there first, okay? I see we make it kind of like a, a very hard stop transition from the whole Trump thing mm -hmm. over to the sexual thing. Okay, so I'm going to just, I got it. Okay, first of all, I agree with you, okay? So please keep that in your mind because okay. what I'm going to say later might. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so how do I. <laughs> How do we address this topic in a in a healthy way mm -hmm. um, that doesn't too much shift the culture? So here, this is what I'm trying to say. Again, I agree with you. I, rape is wrong. Okay, okay, boom. But personally, I don't want to live in a society where a man looks at me like I'm his homeboy, or where a man, any man, is afraid to say, "Oh, I like your hair." or is afraid to open the door, or is afraid to do whatever. It just seemed like, it just seemed like at we get to a point, I'm, I'm a, I am a little bit nervous about this because mm -hmm. we got people coming back from 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. I have a difficult time remembering what happened last week, mm -hmm. let alone a man from 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to negate anything that people are going through. I'm not a psychiatrist. I can't tell you, oh, if this traumatic situation happened to you when you were three, that it's not going to affect you when you're 33 or 63. I can't give you that information. But I do, it, it kind of um, puts me in a, a weird position to where... It's like, okay, we can't be we can't be comfortable around each other anymore. We have to be so rigid around people all the time. Like I have mm -hmm. to be concerned about how I dress or a man gotta be concerned, like, okay, you see somebody that's attractive. Is it is it okay to say that you're attractive? Like I see my homegirls, this sister just came in today and said, I like your boots. Boom, I like your hair. It's mm -hmm. no problem. Mm -hmm. But now what if he said it? Now is it a problem? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it just where is the line? How 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 can we still live in a safe place? And I, that's what I feel like we're falling into this very unsafe place. And then one thing Russell Simmons said, because the sister here brought up Russell Simmons and how he took the opportunity to step down from his his uh, all of his stuff, his empire. But the man said, "Look, I, this was twenty years ago. I don't remember the night in the same way that she remembered the mm -hmm. night." And I remember he saw that too. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I saw that too. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, you know what? In any given situation, mm -hmm. everybody there going to leave with a different way that the story went, out, went mm -hmm. down. So for real, for real, Russell probably could have been sexually assaulted, you mm -hmm. know? But he's yeah. not going to say nothing because he got the money. And she, I, guess, I guess she don't have no money. You yeah. know, I don't know her situation. But I'm just saying, like... Do y'all understand what I'm trying to say? Because I'm really trying hard to find the words. Yeah. <laughs> I guess let me ask you a question. You? Let me ask a question really quick because it's been said that I am one who is a part of the, the Me Too movement. You know, I myself was, um, uh, I guess, sexually assaulted when I was five, five or six by a family member. So um, my thing is, and, and listening to what you say, you know, a lot of people wonder, are the people who who does this to other people, have they been a victim as well? I don't know, because I put out a meme, um, and my cousin actually called me and questioned me because my meme said, I feel like that any uh, rapist or molester should serve a life sentence because their victims do. And my cousin was like, do you really feel that way? And I'm actually getting upset with her because she's questioning me about the meme even though she knows what's going on with me because she says she feels like that everybody who does that to somebody else has been through that. And I say, does that still make it okay? So being that our president now, you all's current president right now, says to grab him by the cooch or to do anything else, does that mean that he has been a victim to that? Or again, is it just a point of power? You know what I'm saying? Because again, to this day, the person who did that to me, I still see them on a daily. My family still, and I get in my feelings, my family still likes their pics. And I'm like, really, you did that? And you know what they did to me? So again, what do you do? How, how do you, how do you go over these people with so-called power or took this over to you? Because 
I'm in a still mind frame, and I know this is being recorded, of kill mode. Because I feel like any, you know, again, that was taken away from me. So okay, I'm now, supposed barring, to forgive barring okay? your situ- No, again, barring your situation, because first of all, that was very, you say you were five years old. Yes. So right then, off the break, that's that's off. You have it. five years old compared to somebody who is 25, 35, 45 who right. is coming out with this situation. Right, but let me so tell you this why- too. But let me tell you this too because I go with the victims because again, I didn't say anything first to my mother until I was 14 because I said nobody's going to believe me. I said if it comes out my family's going to feel some type of way. I felt like that I was the one who did that. So I told my mother only her and we were in the house by ourselves and I whispered it in her ear because I didn't want to say it out loud. And after I get that, that and I get that. that I didn't I say anything else you. until I found out my cousin was molested by the same family member and that was 4 years no that, Actually, that was just three years ago because my sister heard her speak at a event and heard her say that. And I went and approached her. So, again, bad to say, but I was happy that it happened to her, too, because now I knew that I wasn't well, alone. The only one. Right. But exactly. it's never you. You would never have been the problem. The problem is the perpetrator. But, again, like I said, rape is wrong. Okay? Molestation, child molestation, all of that is wrong. I don't think anybody in here would think that that's right. But what I... I was kind of referring to was just the relationship between male and female. So that's, you kind of took it a little bit further than where I was going. I'm just saying, again, the exact example, this is the head said, you got nice boots. If this brother said the same thing, is that sexually harassing me? A lot of people are saying that I'm being sexually harassed because of the things that men are saying. There was one lady who said she was harassed by the way that the guy looked at her. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, so where is the line here? I'm not talking about well, rape. I'm not talking about child molestation. All of that stuff is no way can, can we I, make that be I, okay. Right. But can I clear up, kind of, because I didn't mean to you shift make the, the line narrative. about it. Because what I was really saying was injustice or whatever happens, like foul stuff has been happening since the beginning of the time. What I'm saying is deal with it. If you are alleging somebody, no, no, no what, let me clarify. If, if you are alleging that somebody raped you, you got stuff that you can do. Go to the police. Go to the, I don't care how long it was. You do that. But it's become a thing because when the media picks it up, now you know about it, now you know about it. So now you're emotionally invested in something that you don't have nothing to do with it. When that person has legal recourse that they could, and, and some do, most do, some choose not to for whatever reason. But, you know what I mean, you have something that they can do personal to that situation. Now, I'm involved in something that I ain't got nothing to do with. So now I'm, I saw a lady post the other day for, um, with the Matt Lauer situation. She says, I never liked him. Now I know why. What? Like, seriously, ma'am? Like, that's what's going on. You got people getting emotionally invested in stuff they ain't got nothing to do with. So if you got raped, report it. If you didn't, it's going to get found out. If you raped somebody, you should go to jail. Rape is wrong is wrong. If you're doing whatever that's foul, you should pay for it. But my thing is, you deal with that because there's, there's systems in place for you to deal with that. It's become a thing because now we, instead of dealing with it, we just get everybody involved and build these squads and name everything, put a culture name on everything. You know what I mean? Come on. Let's, let's kind of cut that out and let's grow up a little bit. Can you hear me now? It's a difference between rape and, and physically touching someone and sexual harassment. Now, what the, the problem is is everybody is, is is putting everything into one bucket. The bucket, the bucket that you that you're not really saying clear is that they're putting the verbal bucket and the physical bucket all into one. Now, no one has the right to touch or abuse anyone in that manner. Um, if you've touched a woman or raped a woman in in, in, in that aspect, yeah, you should be. No matter, it's no, it's no statute of limitations on that. I don't care if it happened when you was five years old or if it happened two weeks ago. Now, if you may have said some things to a person, that gets you fired from a job. That doesn't get you arrested. So it's the difference between a fireable offense and a, an arrestable offense. And so what's, what's happening, what, what's going on now is people are, are quitting their jobs because they've said some things, been inappropriate. Now, the ones that have touched people, they should be arrested. They're, they're the ones that have court cases like Bill Cosby. Um, but all in all, just like go touch on what Ashley said. Yeah, it's getting to a point to where we have to take it back to where you, you tip your hat to a woman if you're interested. And, 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 you, and you take that and, and, and you go on from that because a lot of men don't know how to handle a woman. You know? and, 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 
And it's it's not a bad thing. It's just a lot of women, a lot of men don't know how to handle a woman because they weren't taught, and a lot of, and women don't know how to accept a man because they haven't been presented that. So you, you, if I have to go back to tipping my hat to a woman <laughs> to say hello, then I'll do that, and that's not a problem. You can't but, like nobody, but when a, you, you can't, can't hurt like anybody, nobody. Like you can't. But but if a man has to to grab you, if I have to grab you, or if I have to stop you in your track to 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 stop you, let you know I'm interested in you. Then, then that is a problem. So we have to be more personable. So we have to understand verbal cues. We have to understand eyes and, and, and body movements and stuff like that. So the more we, we touch these cell phones, the more we, we touch our computers, the less, we're looking, yeah. the less we're looking people in the eyes, the less we're seeing them walk and talk. So, 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 so the more we, we, we put this down, and I can look at the woman, and I can see if she's interested, even if she's, hey, how you doing? I mean, I'm a little different, so I kind of get that. But what I'm saying is, is once a person can, can be a person, can be a human, then we can see, we can feel, and we can, we can, we can get that, that vibe, that spiritual connection. And if we see, we feel that vibe that's not there, then we, you, know, you know what? You know what? Tip my hat, and I keep it moving. I, I, I can dig it, man. I, 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 I yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah I can dig it. Marcus, <laughs> you know, I got... You know, I'm trying, you know, I'll go right back to the beginning of, of the conversation. We all have spent 30, almost 40 minutes talking about sexual harassment to rape. And I begin this conversation by saying, what is the agenda? Now, who's been watching about the tax reform? Because we got to pay taxes. Now, if you think about it, everybody is so emotional and invested in this. Now... I'm part of the Me Too clan as well. Unfortunately, at the age of 13, my high school sweetheart decided that instead of me going to school, he thought he had a, a permanent plan in my life that I had to make an adult decision. If you know what I'm talking about, just nod your head. At the age of 13, okay? So um, I'm just sharing this with you is that, again, the government, and Marcus, you know, I love my nickname, the Conspiracy Chick. The government has now bamboozled us that we have sat here and talked about a most personal, intimate, disrespectful, oh, arrogant, grimy. If you've been a victim and you know what it is, it's not a comfortable conversation. And but we're having it today. This is not comfortable for me to sit and listen. But the government has done that, that one, two, or three people raised their hand, including myself, because the tax reform is coming up. And if you are middle class, lower class, or upper class, or any class you want to decide, you better make sure that they're going to have your coins right, because somebody is going to keep somebody driving their $300,000 cars and living in their $1.5 million homes and sending their children to private school while we busting our ass trying to figure out why our kids can't get books in Richmond City. So I'm not taking any flavor away from anybody. But remember, what is the true agenda? that the government is making sure that we are not paying attention. And that was my question earlier. I can dig it. I, my, my, my question is this. Um, I'm a little different. I'm, I'm the one that's, I'm not for, I'm not against, I'm in the middle. Like, I'm, I'm like this. If, if it takes this for, for certain people to talk about certain things, then you know what? Is, is, is meant to happen. It's meant to be. If you're spiritual, if you're, if you're religious or whatever, they say things are meant to be. So if it takes the man on the moon to blow the moon up for you to talk about whatever's going on in your house, then dang, that's what it took. You know, so, so we shouldn't always be, be uh, retroactive. We got to be a little bit more proactive in what we do. So I heard this guy say one time, we can't always, just like my brother said today, I'm going to give you your flowers while you're still living. Right. Yeah. So we can't live like that. We live every day doing whatever we want to do. And when somebody die, what do we do? We give them their flowers. Yeah. So if we live our life doing everything that don't matter until somebody die, that's a problem. If we, Going retrograde, <laughs> if we live every day 
providing flowers so something big happens, it won't have that much of an effect on us. I love that point. That's the and way we should live. It, I love that point. And I'm about to stir the pot while I sip on my tea for a minute. Because if it was 13 black chick, no, no, 13 women of color who came out and said that Weinstein did that to them, would the animosity be going on in this conversation now? Probably the conversation would never even exist. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. Whoever said that the victim needs to go to the police, let me share one thing about the police. 90% of the police are what? They are men. They're not women. They are men. Number two, dependent on your age, your demographics, your, even your religious beliefs, and I'm not even talking about men because I'm not a man, but as a female, it is hard. It is difficult. They make you feel lower than the person who abused you. Their job is to not help you. They will ask you questions that make you feel that you put yourself in that damn position. Five or 13 or 25. So whoever said that, love you to pieces. But I'm going to sip my tea on that because that's not the approach. That if 13 black women stood up actresses, singers, models decided to do this, do you think Russell Simmons would have quit his job today? Do you think the politicians would be like, oh, yeah, I had some brown sugar or coffee or whatever? No, the conversation wouldn't exist. But since we had women that were not of color and they are so brave and they stood up, now everybody, including us and our community, is talking about their demise. And we're the ones who fought it many times. So help me with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, AJ. You got the mic, go ahead, go ahead. I got you, I can hear you, go. go okay. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I, I just, I just wanna, uh, I wanna ask the uh, question. I want everybody to honestly answer this because it felt good. But the reality is, is if there were thirteen black women that stood up and did that, it would be much more of a chaotic mess in this country, in this country, than you're giving it credit because not only would all of these black people be up in their arms marching. There's a lot of white people in this neighborhood that were shut down I-95 for something like that. That's a true story. My neighbor shut down I-95. So I just wanted to say that. And I, and I think I'm saying that because you got to have a little more respect for yourself. Not you, but we do. Like, you know, the world really respects black people. And we need to begin to accept that, that we're, people aren't, take, aren't stepping over on us like they used to. So uh, I will also say that, you know, it's fucked up what's going on. But... <laughs> Yeah. If it was thirteen man, black, with a black, I could I could see that happening if it was a white man who was offending them. But what if it was a brother who was? Offending? Oh well, I'm not gonna keep getting into what if she said one because, thing and I just yeah I don't Kelly know. Kelly got know, a but. whole little sex camp going on and people coming out this and people coming out now and I mean now listen it ain't gotta be but you know what when it's on my when it's interrupting my show and when I watch a CNN and they mention R Kelly. It's the business, okay? So it ain't got to be your business, but you in this room, and it's brought on, so it's the business. So all I'm just saying is, R. Kelly got a sex camp going on. Now, at first, I said, hey, ladies, y'all want to be a part of his harem? Be a part of it. That ain't my business. But there was two girls came out and said that they felt like they was abused. They didn't get no attention. I don't know what was going on in the sex camps, but I'm understanding that if you feel as though you don't want to be a part... And if no mean no, then how come they ain't getting it going on? Ain't no has to have with Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy and that radio. Caller, you rocking with us. We rolling with you. Who the hell you is? Blessings, everybody. I apologize for calling in again. I just had to say something. This time I said, you know what? I got to say something, so please forgive me. Um, as a gentleman that tries his best to do right by women overall, especially in the entertainment and fashion industry, and a couple of the ladies in the room know what I'm talking about, 
I've seen it all the time, and especially as someone who spoke up a lot against a lot of these things, you kind of get blackballed in it. And you're also, uh, and I may have missed this part of the uh, conversation, but, you know, in the entertainment world, you are told to act a certain way, regardless if you do feel comfortable or not, or you're viewed less than. And things like that has been practiced along over the years that you have older women who are, uh, I've seen many in the 70s, 80s, 90s say, just deal with it. That's just part of life. As a woman, you're going to have to accept that. And that's what's just make the world go around. So a lot of it is a generational uh, mental illness uh, to say that goes on within this field. And unfortunately, that still needs to change. And unfortunately, once you know better, you do better. But you still have a lot of those who are in power who are still taught from an older mindset. Uh, and I agree with Ms. Thomas that uh, there's plenty of people who have said it on the Today Show and several other areas that if it wasn't for the fact that it was a bunch of white women who spoke up on all these different issues. They wouldn't have said anything. And you have to look also what's happened overseas. It's a lot that's going on as well. So it's a bunch of different dynamics, but your people have to understand to learn to what is assault and what is not assault and understand where it is, the line. You can't get in your feelings if someone says, hello, good evening, how you doing? Offer their hand to help you out the car or something and you want to call it assault because you didn't find that person attractive. But then the baller or somebody you perceive that has money says the same thing. It's okay. And you see that as well that goes on in the uh, world today. I got you, Mr. LP. We appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of it. Uh, uh, thank you for rocking with us. Thank you for listening. Uh, mm-hmm. Keep keep doing what you're doing, Peace. man. Hey, look, look, look. Before you hang up, before yes. you hang up, I need you to plug your stuff, man. You are a Legacy Internet Radio alumni and live in radio, aired on Legacy Internet Radio for a long time. Uh, plug what you're doing real quick before I let you go. Plug, plug. Hey, look, plug your stuff, man. <laughs> Not a problem. First off, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we have a meeting going on this following Tuesday over at Little Pizza in Willow Lawn, 4925 West Broad Street at 7.30 uh, p.m. We're having a meeting regarding Bitcoin. Coming uh, yeah. March 3rd, we have a model field day where we you get to travel throughout different parts of Richmond, unique areas to take photos with four of the top photographers in the industry. And you have an opportunity to win a cash prize of $1,000 in a major your photo shoot and also the model submission and we got a few other little uh projects up the line so i keep checking on and live in global media's facebook page and my personal page and we've got a few things going on mr lp steven Sykes, got more love for you than you know brother thank you for being who you thank are you, thank you for being my brother thank you for rocking with me because you know i'm gonna roll with you right yeah, yeah, it works for me. It works for me. You got it, brother. Be cool, man. Talk to you soon. Ain't Thank no, you, sir. Bye-bye. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy and that radio. Uh, we're going to take our final break of the night. Come back. I'm going to close it out with my rant, my closing. We're going to have a moment in history of missing child. Y'all know the staples of the show. I got a studio audience. A whole bunch of folks is in the room. Yeah. Legacy Media Group, Legacy Internet Radio, Legacy TV. Y'all rocking with me. I'm rolling with y'all. Shout out to everybody that's listening to us. Shout out to everybody who wants to be a part of the night. Shout out to everybody that's in the room. Appreciate y'all. Be back in a few. Y'all stay with us. What's up, y'all? This is your man, K-Dub. And when I'm down on 285, down in Atlanta, GA, maybe on I-64 in Newport News, Virginia, or maybe I'm in Jersey City catching that light rail headed downtown to go into NYC, I'm always plugged in to Legacy Internet Radio, listening to Ain't No Half-Stepping with my man, Marcus J. Check it out, y'all. Peace. Hey, this is Warren Ballantyne, the number one truth right in America, and I'm listening to my man, my brother, Marcus J., right here on Legacy Internet Radio.